Hi, I'm Vikas Meel, founder of ACEJ, which is focused on creating a more efficient methodology for J main, J advanced, and NEET preparation. One of the key elements of our approach has been the question types or skill based approach. So, what is it? Let's understand a bit about it. But before we do so, as my quick introduction, I've done my BTEC from IIT Delhi and Masters from Purdue University in Mechanical Engineering. And while I have 16 years of experience in the automotive industry, over the last five years, I have been exploring ways to make competitive exam preparation a bit more efficient and effective from beginning till the end, keeping in mind the power of technology. So what is the skill-based approach? Or we can say question type approach. Well, any subject, say physics, from a high level is typically divided into a certain number of chapters say 20 to 30 chapters if you look at class 11th and 12th physics put together. And this categorization while needed does not represent the underlying complexity of concepts in the chapters. Now, if you look at the questions, on the other hand, there are tens of thousands of questions out there, which even though you can bucketize into say 80 to 100 subtopics or categories, they seem different from each other. So obviously it is not easy to understand the complexity in application of concepts and practice and revise smartly. So what can be done about it? Well, for each chapter, if you look closely at the questions from the last 40 years of J-Main, J-Advanced, NEET and other exams, and research all the questions from popular books, you start to see patterns emerging in the application of concepts. Once again, application of concepts. In other words, there are patterns in ways questions are framed on a concept and slightly different set of steps are needed to solve each. But all questions in that question type, they essentially require the same steps, which is great because then we won't need to deal with tens of thousands of questions, but rather seven to 800 different question types. Now, before I look at an example, note that most of the good teachers of the subject will intuitively know these variations in applications. And I'm sure you will find a set of personal notes maintained by each faculty. But the challenge is that students do not see the pattern. Once again, patterns are not clear to students. What they see is teacher covering theory and some sample questions, followed by a practice sheet of questions that they need to solve. This does not help build a strong understanding of the concept and neither does it help students retain the memory of the questions they solved. Think of going to a metro city with a friend who knows the city well and shows you different streets or popular spots once, after which you are expected to learn about the city on your own. How much would you remember? Now let's say that you have the assistance of a Google map. Wouldn't that make it easier? You will still perhaps need that friend to understand things better, but now you'll be asking them questions about places you want to know or where you get lost. So let's take a quick look at an example to understand different applications of a concept that a student should be aware of to build a better understanding. Here we'll not go into the details of steps needed to approach them, but hopefully you will get a gist. So most are familiar with a projectile, which is simply an object, say a cricket ball, thrown at an angle from the ground. Now the underlying physics or equations are relatively simple and straightforward. But let's explore different scenarios in which you will use these equations differently. So in the first scenario, given launch velocity and projection angle for a projectile thrown from the ground, you might be asked to determine the maximum height or range or minimum kinetic energy of the projectile. In the second scenario, you might be tested on the fact that a projectile thrown with the same launch velocity but angles theta and 90 minus theta, for example, 30 degrees and 60 degrees will have the same range. In the third scenario, you might be given that the projectile is thrown from a height and now you might be asked to determine the range or time taken to hit the ground. In the next scenario, you may not be given the launch velocity and projection angle, but angle the velocity vector of the projectile makes with the horizontal at two different times in its flight. And you might be asked to determine some unknown about the flight path or you might be given that a projectile has some obstacle in its path, say a wall or a hill, and you might be asked to determine where the projectile will hit the obstacle. Or you might be asked to determine the average velocity 
during the symmetric part of the flight. In the next scenario, you might be asked to determine the radius of curvature at a certain point along the trajectory. Or you might be given an equation of trajectory of a projectile and asked to determine its launch velocity and projection angle, and so on and so forth. Now students need to practice few questions of each type to build a better understanding and a longer term memory rather than solving 50 questions of one type with them not being aware of the other types which will end up surprising them in the exam. Hopefully you got the idea. In summary, question types are what we call subject skills which essentially capture the different applications of concept will help teacher and student navigate the complexity in application of concepts in a structured, easy to understand and smarter way. And not just that, revision can be approached in a much more efficient way, where teachers and students revise certain question types and skills from a chapter at a time, and not the entire chapter, which is nearly impossible anyway. So it is my hope that you will make use of this efficient approach and scales the height quicker. Thank you.